I uh, believe that uh, God has a hand in the asylum uh, ministry, um, that um, everybody's uh, doing their best. Yeah, I never ever thought that, that I would ever be involved in, in a work like this, working with people from around the world and sharing Jesus with them in, in very, very simple ways. We may only see them on a Monday, but um, you get to recognise faces even if we don't know all of the names of them because there's so many to re remember. But um, yeah, it, it's just a way of, of us showing them love and, and getting something in return, friendship of them. We love them. I mean, they're not all without fault. None of us is without fault. But they're just so appreciative of what we do for them. And, and they just love us back. And we're delighted and privileged to be serving the Lord in this way. But I feel safe near the new family that God gave me. And, uh, and I feel here is my home now. And if I was a part of this Christian family, I wouldn't feel like this. I would have scared because of my situation. But they gave me safety, they gave me love, they gave me passionate, they encouraged me. And I learned lots of things, lots of kindness, happiness from them, because they love me and they show they show everything that they've got in their heart to me, like love, love, like passionate. And I love them because I know that uh, God put them in my way. We have about 50 volunteers who are involved in the drop-in. Um, and that, that there are people who are kind of uh, just really enthused and available and um, just enjoying working uh, in, in this particular setting at the minute. It was on a Monday at the mixed drop-in when a lady came in for the first time and I was sat on the welcome desk and I said to her, which country are you from? And she said, Uganda. And I said to her, oh, Uganda's a lovely country. I've been to Uganda five times. And her face just lit up and she said, you've been to Uganda? And I said, yes. And that, was it. that forged a real bond between me and her. It's been a real privilege for me to get in particular to get to know one of the young people, the daughters of one of the asylum-seeking families, and hear her story, and seeing how she's come from Iran with no English from a different culture, and seeing her embrace uh, British culture and become um, a Teesider, really. She now speaks English brilliantly with a Teesside accent. And just seeing how things have happened for her and the joy as they were given their you know, right to remain here and the difference it's going to make to her family, but the struggle that's still ahead for them. It's not all clean, you know, sort of plain sailing once that is actually granted, but it's been a real privilege to work with her. I am born in a Muslim family. After that, I saw or I know Jesus when we came in the UK. And just... I gave my life to Jesus. I'm very happy about it. And I evangelize many people, invite them to church. And I'm very happy about it because it's a new life for me and my family. And just, I think I born again. What I was surprised about was that someone that uh, you really don't know and then you take him into your church or sometime into uh, your house without even knowing this person to a, to a, to, to a great extent. So it has been, uh, it, it, I'm amazed by that, but I, I always knew that uh, the church would be welcoming anyway. So. A lot of them came from a Muslim background and we were going to legal situations that really looked up against it and we would walk out and the way that they trusted God to see them through this uh, quite honestly put me to shame because it wasn't my life that was being affected but they were trusting God 
and in many cases they were proved absolutely right. So it's not by chance that God's brought them here. It's, it's, it's part of the journey in their life and they arrive here and God's brought them here and part of the journey, it, it's a miracle that they've survived the journey, that they've come here and, and the difficulties that they've been through. Is, it just touches your heart so much, you know, when, when you listen to the stories of, of what's happened to them and the fact that some of them have almost died on the journey. In fact, some of them have died on the journey. Um, I can tell you stories about, about a man and his two sons and, and only the man and his son arrived here. The other son is lost, is gone. It's not just about opening your heart, it's opening your homes. We had over 60 people taken home on Christmas Day. We've had people taking asylum seekers out hiking. We have people who have opened their homes and asylum seekers have lived with them. I have an asylum seeker who has been living with me for seven months until his case comes up. And if he goes back to his country, he will be killed. And we need to open our hearts. We need to open our pockets. We need to open our homes. We need to give our skills. These people need our time. How do you tell someone Jesus loves them and do nothing? <laughs>